Christina. I'm back with another episode of House History. And today I'm talking with my friend Frank Neitzel. He is one of our oldest remaining residents from Teedville. And if you remember in my story about Teedville, that was located kind of on the Hinsdale border and it was um, near the 91st and County Line Wolf Road area. It was eventually annexed into Willow Springs, but it was a thriving small community back around the turn of the century. And um, Frank has been kind enough to share his memories with me today. It's a little bit of an oral history for the museum as well. And so we're gonna take a walk back. And I kind of wanted to, you know, we already looked at the families that came here and you know, built up the area, the pioneer families, like the Kellers and the Teeds and that kind of thing. But this time I kind of wanted to delve into, you know, our salt of the earth families that made up our community. So um, I hope you will enjoy this as much as I enjoyed making it. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Christina Andino. I am back with another episode of House History and today we are at the Robert Bile House with Frank Neitzel. Um, he is one of our older residents in the area who actually um, grew up in Teeville, uh, right on the border, so you know, kind of the same thing. And if you'll remember, we did do a segment not long ago it was a three-part series, so it was Teedville, the beginning, and then Santa Fe, and then Rudy's Farm. So I thought this was kind of a nice addition, and we're going to talk a little bit to Frank and hear some of his reminiscence, and um, I think you will really enjoy it. So let's get started, and um, I'm just going to like ask you some questions, and you can just you know answer however you like to. So. Let's start with, where did you guys live? Where was the house? It was um, just over the border into DuPage County and about uh, south of the Santa Fe Railroad tracks and next to the Des Plaines River. Yeah, okay. And what kind of house was it? Like, cause I know the houses were very different back in the day. So tell us a little bit it was about a that. Small home. And was built. I don't know who built it. I think our grandfather built it. Okay. And uh, and uh, other than that, uh, don't know much about it. it. Was but it was a stone foundation mm -hmm. in which they used the um, uh, what's called stones. Uh, and uh, other than that, and dirt basement, and that's the way it was. Okay. Was it two story? was two story and had uh, bedrooms upstairs and three bedroom two bedrooms upstairs okay and uh one bedroom downstairs and other than that uh okay. was it heated by wood stove wood stove and cooking stove well, it was a wood stove also okay okay and then outdoor was, plumbing too right so you outdoor had, plumbing yeah. yes and uh um uh, yeah no heat upstairs there was no heat. There was a uh, the sweat beds, feather beds, and stuff like that. We had uh, to keep warm, but it was like sometimes we got frost on the bed where you were breathing. Oh no, we're so spoiled how now. How cold it was! <laughs> wow, it was cold. And how many kids were sleeping up there? Well, when that, well, when we got older, that's where we went. We, when we got to be three, four years old, we went up there. Okay. And we sat downstairs. There we had a couch bed that made into a couch okay bed and then used to uh that's where we slept when we were real young yeah is the house still there what no they the fire department came and burned it down oh a lot okay. of years ago okay and what is there now you know nothing okay nothing, so nothing. it's just open land yeah okay um and so tell us a little bit about teedville what was that like in the day <laughs> <laughs> well, i think everybody we, wants to know that yeah, but the only <laughs> Well, we remember basically when we remember the uh, picnics and stuff like that that they had on weekends, and they had a, what they call a doodle bug came out of Chicago and, and uh, carried people out of uh, the city and came to the park to go. To, well, they had uh, uh, 
food and drinks and stuff like that. And uh, other than that, that you know, it was uh, was big park. Yeah, that's all yeah. huge. And what about? Um, do you remember the stores? The the tavern. There was only one. Yes, yes, one store and one tavern. Okay, so it's like a general store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that was owned by the Teats. Yes, Fred Teat. Uh, but uh, there was only a store in the area, basically. Yeah. My, otherwise, my parents would shop in La Mata when they on occasion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who who were your closest friends growing up? Uh, basically, the gardeners um, and Teats. Okay. And they they, they were uh, growing up there, of course. Uh, I don't uh, re recall of any of any, anybody else, but we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. We had no way to travel. Right, right. And so. we were, because we were, when we were young, and we always went to, we had to walk to school, whatever it was. And where did you go to school? I went to Palisade School, and then I... Okay, so I'm here with Frank Neitzel, one of our oldest residents here who grew up in Teedville. We're doing an oral history. Um, for the Nitzel Archives. Um, and so I'm just gonna ask some questions here of Frank. Um, so your full name, is it Frank or is it like Franz or? It was Franz, yeah. Okay, so. Right, yeah, Franz. And were you named after anybody? Uh, that seemed to be a Carmen middle name. Yeah. For a lot of German children. I know there's a lot of the families, like uh, every generation, it's like all the same names. Yeah. So trying to track it is a little <laughs> difficult sometimes. Um, so um, when were you born? November 5th, 1930. Okay. And you were born right here in our area. I was born at home. Yeah, home. Yeah, that, that was common, I know, yeah. back in the day. Uh, was there a doctor or mid a midwife or something? There was a one in Wall Springs that uh, was a... Uh, I don't, I don't know much about it, but um, he was the only doctor that, that was close by that we, if we had a problem, we'd go to Willow Springs and see him. What was his name? I, I, was it I Doc Rust? I, pardon? Was it Doc Rust? One of the Doc Rusts? And uh, there's I, a lot I don't recall. <laughs> um, don't remember, I should say. Okay, okay. Um, and what did your father do for a living? Uh, he worked uh, on the Santa Fe Railroad tracks. Okay, all right. Um, and you were in cement, correct? I worked in concrete, yes. Okay, or concrete, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, did you work by yourself? Did you? Have... No, I worked for kind for different people. Okay. Different contractors. Okay, and your mother was she was you know having kids and a, a homemaker, as I believe yeah. most probably were back in the day. Um, your your grandparents did they come? They were from Germany, were they? I, I I'm assuming so. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um. And what do you remember most about your mother growing up? She did a lot of canning. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. What kind yeah. of stuff did she can? What did Tomatoes, you anything, everything that was in the garden. Nice. Oh my gosh, yes. That's unreal. Um, and what do you remember most about your father? Uh, well, he did the milking the cows and feeding pigs and chickens. He took care of basically all the animals outside. Okay, so so you guys have, did have a farm? Yeah. Yeah. And was, that, was that common? Most people did? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was common. Very common. And, but there was also a turkey Smoke. farm that everyone worked on. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that came on later in life though. The Sass turkey farm? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what about like special holiday traditions? Did you have anything like that in your family? Like well, Christmas and yeah, that was always uh, good times. Yeah. What did you guys have for Christmas back then? Uh, like a goose or something, or a probably turkey? a goose, yeah, yeah. because okay. that would be head geese. Okay, were those um, common around here? Yes, geese, yeah, yeah. Okay. And chickens, well, everybody had basically animals also to eat. 
Yeah. yeah. There is always something you could yeah. <laughs> get a hold of, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and were there any special family heirlooms that were handed down to you? Like tools mm -hmm. or... I, I don't recall, but no. Yeah. I know some of these questions, you have to kind of think about it. It's like... Yes. Um, so how many siblings do you have? I got the... Uh, there were seven of us, seven children. Mm -hmm. And where do you fall? In the middle. Okay, square in the middle, huh? So you're kind of the even keel. Yeah, yeah, that was the mixed. That was the uh, middle one. Okay, okay. And you um, you went into the service like most people. Yes. Correct, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I went, uh, well, I mean, I turned 21. The 5th of November and the 21st of November, I was in the Army. Wow, yeah, it's yeah, fast. Yeah, we, yeah, that was a uh, big, big, they were drafting 70,000, 80,000 people uh, for soldiers a month. Um, okay, tell me again what that was. Chicken, baked chicken with cream poured over. Baked chicken oh, with cream. cream poured over. Okay, that was something your grandmother made? And you love it. it. That was one of your favorites. Oh yeah, that sounds yeah, good. I think everybody's favorite. Do you ha do you still have that recipe? Uh, it's cook a chicken and put the sweet cream on top of it. But the thing but is, yeah, the processed know. cream now doesn't have the same it it because, of, because of the um, um, what pasteurization? Yeah, whatever. Go ahead. Preserves. Right, right, right. And that, because of that, it curdles. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, no. Um, we talked about the doodle bug. Yeah. The doodle bug was like the train that came out of the city. Only, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the mail yeah, car? It ran to, during the week, it ran from uh, Chicago to Joliet. And then on the way, um, on the tracks, they had a bag they hung on the on a pole mm -hmm. and the train would come to the two and it would take the bag they put mail in and then and it took the mail to to Chicago or wherever we went to the post office. Oh okay okay yeah I think I do remember hearing something about that. Yeah that, that was yeah. And then the post office um the teats had that little post office right so people would send yeah, stuff there, right there, yeah. that way. Inside yeah in yeah. the store. And so describe like what a day was like, you know, when you were say maybe like grade school age. Was was it like wake up early, do chores on the farm and then go to school or? Uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, with that, like, it, uh, you know, we didn't do, we had those chores that night when we came to school. Okay. So it was go to school, then come home yeah. and then do the yeah. chores. Yeah. Have dinner. Yeah, that day, evening. Uh, yeah, we and then you had oil lamps, right? Because there wasn't yeah, electricity. Yeah. So, I mean, was it hard to do things when there wasn't like a We didn't do it. We didn't uh, take care of that um, with the lamps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Parents took care of that. Okay. We didn't do any of that. Okay. Good thing to ask them about the end of the war. Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the end of the war. I came home from school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were in, uh, yeah, I, I was going to Trinity at that time, Trinity Lutheran at that time. And, uh, and what year they, was it? Uh, 1945. Okay. And anyway, uh, the, they came out, the, the teacher came out, it came out, they came out and told the teacher that uh, the war had ended. And so they let us out of school and we went home and my mother couldn't figure why we were coming home from school and mm -hmm. she had she was doing laundry and uh she she was all excited about you know, what the heck was going on and we told her the war had ended and mm -hmm. everything yeah yeah that was a nice yeah. feeling right yeah yeah that was yeah we walked home we had that was a two-mile walk one way to go to school. <laughs> oh 
You're done. Yeah. It's crazy. So what did you do in the winters? Like, you know, we did, did such extreme ice weather. skating on a river and we did uh, everything that could, that was done outside. Yeah, yeah. We had a toboggan and we go to Smokesville and, mm -hmm. oh man, that thing was, that's all homes now. Big. Yeah, Big. right. Yeah. So, nice. We do enjoy it very much. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's so different now, right? I mean, yeah. when you think about how rural it was back in the day and how it's so built yeah. up now. But we, like I said, we didn't, we didn't have, he didn't, we had heat in the house, but not upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, did your mom make the clothing for you guys usually, or? Uh, I think at first she did a lot of knitting, yeah, mm -hmm. sweaters and stuff, but, uh, then later on, things, of course, everything changed too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what was your favorite hobby in your free time? And even at, you know, as you grew up, like, did you have any, you know, big, I like ball hobbies? and baseball, everything. Mm -hmm. We liked hockey because the ponds and everything froze over every year. Oh, and we, yeah. thought we would go skiing, skating. good. And how did your family spend um, evenings and weekends? Uh, well, basically, we didn't get any, well, when we got older, we could go someplace. We could walk wherever we were going to go and meet other f friends. But other than that, uh, there wasn't, uh, we might want once in a while, uh, my uh, uncles and aunts would come out on a one on one at a time, basically, and spend the time with us. Yeah, that was. And where were they coming from? Like Pennzell or Western Springs, or. Okay. They were close by. Now, did you guys, did a lot of people ride horses back then? No. No. And how were they getting around? Just walking? Yeah, walking, unless they had a car and hard to. Not many people had cars then either, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense that people would just live close to each other. And yeah, we'd just... walk. We'd walk right. everywhere. Right. Um, and when did you get married? Um, and then uh, 1954. And who was your bride? Uh, Doris Mahan. Mm -hmm. And she was a blind date. Really? That's where my cousin. Okay. Yeah. And where did she live? West Mount. Okay. Okay. So was it love at first sight? Uh. Well, was somebody to date? I I guess like not really. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't sure. <laughs> you get to meet people and then you learn about them. Sure, of course, of course. And so you had, um, is it two daughters or is there more of you? There's two of us. Okay, so you have two daughters. Yeah. And were you born close together, the two of you? Okay. Yeah. And were you named after anybody? No. Just like the names? Yeah. Um, and you guys lived, where did you grow up? Right here. Right where my dad lives now. Yeah, okay. Always. <laughs> yep. And what was your wedding like? Well, it was small and was nice because it was all friends. Nice. All, all people I grew up with. Okay. Okay. Was there, so you got married at Trinity Lutheran and how, how, how many people were there, do you think? Uh, not many. Uh, yeah, he married it was a small Trinity. amount. No? He married, he married at married, Methodist. No, I got married in a Methodist church in um, West Mount. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. And then did you have a reception afterwards? Yes. Uh, the place was not there. It, was, it used to be on uh, Madison Street, but it was like Country Club. Okay. Well, do you yes. remember what it was called? No, I okay. don't remember. It was a small place, but good time. Yeah. And how long were you engaged before you got married? Uh, a couple months. Okay. Yeah, I know people didn't really waste a lot they of time. They got married a year after they started dating. A year? Okay, okay. <laughs> That's longer than I thought. <laughs> you know, usually you hear people tell the stories back yeah. then. It's like, oh, you know, we met, we got married, like, you know, a couple weeks later. <laughs> okay. In, in addition to the fact that 
the blind date was set up by his cousin. She was also my mom's best friend. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. They went to high school together. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Did you go on a honeymoon or anything after? Yes, and they went to Florida. Nice, what part? Fort Lauderdale. Okay. I had a sister and brother-in-law lived down there. Was that the first time you saw the ocean? Well, no, I saw the ocean because I, I, big boat went over. Oh, oh yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. How could I forget that? <laughs> big boat. Yes. I saw a whale when we were, now we were a Greek ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, my dad went, was stationed in Germany, and so I think he was in the 50s, late 50s. Mm -hmm. Um, but he told stories about going over on the boat and all yeah. these guys that would get sick and ugh. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> okay, I couldn't believe it. Tell, tell her the story about yeah, that. It. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that, it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing bothered me. Anyway, uh, these bunch of guys were playing poker on the floor. And this one guy was in the bunk above him. Yeah. And of course he got sick and he bought, oh no! He broke up the garden. Oh, but no. but okay. So the story goes. This is what he told me. He said, he said there was the big storm and boat was like yeah. this. My dad slept through the entire thing. Okay. Really? He said he comes up on the deck the next morning and they're cleaning the deck and he's like, "What's going on?" And they he said, vomited. "He vomited." He vomited on the deck. He vomited. So he, he had slept through the whole thing. He didn't know what had happened. You know, no. <laughs> never, never bothered me. I'm guessing That's probably good. living near the train tracks. Nothing, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. You I sleep do, through I everything. Don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's crazy. Ew. <laughs> uh. Um so what would you say is the key to a successful marriage? <laughs> I don't know. We got along. Just finding you know, someone you. Have. I did a little. I did a lot of stuff though. It was something that I knew. I could bake. I could. That was, you know, cooking. Yeah. And so was, you were helpful. Yeah. That, yeah. I was. I mean, it's just something that was so simple. It's still simple. Mm -hmm. Do you like to cook? I like cook cooking? all my meals. I still cook them all. Good for you. And I bake. I bake the right. uh, well, she went the thing and that they brought the carrot cakes back. I made the containers and mm -hmm. people say it's the best carrot cake they ever eat. Oh wow. Yeah. And then same with the I'll German. be over. <laughs> and, 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 and she she said too, she said, uh, she she never they never had it before, but they're uh, on the corner down on some in my corner down the street and they had a party, black party or whatever you want to call it, or, and yeah. they wanted to bring some things and bring some cookies, and, so I made, made cakes, and yeah. uh, she, she brought the container back, she said, oh my gosh, the people love that stuff. Nice. And then I had other people tell me it's the best they've ever eaten. Nice. And that's what the darling she said. should the bakery. Darling yeah. said that the we 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 that. cake I make, the same thing, she said I never tasted anything like that. <laughs> I don't know what I, what I do wrong. <laughs> and I'm a lousy cook. No, obviously you are not a lousy cook. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, and also, I think another good question would be, what is the key to living a long life? <laughs> Anything there, or is it just I pure luck? I did a lot of work. I got one thing. Well, yeah. let's, let mm -hmm. me tell you, Christine. My dad's oldest brother lived to 92. Your sister, Ella, was how old? She had to be uh, close to 90. And she was a smoker. Oh, she wow. smoked all her life, yeah. and she, but she lived to 90. So um, his brother, Edwin, was the youngest to die. I mean, yeah. he was he the was early. in his late, middle, late 60s. Yeah, okay. uh, he was working over at uh, UOP, so I don't know if it's some chemicals that he was working with. Mm -hmm. But then there's my dad, and then his younger brother, who's only two years younger, and then his next younger sister, mm -hmm. who's two years yeah. younger than. So it's like, you know, about every two yeah. years. My younger sister's 84. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, to me, mm -hmm. if you ask my opinion, it would be the fact that 
they spent a lot of time outside. Yeah. You know, um, they weren't with computers and TVs and all right. that stuff. I think all of them have always been athletic too. Mm -hmm. They've always, like, even your sisters are very athletic. Your yeah. sisters play softball. Yeah. You know? They were in sports, really sports. We were always in sports. Right. Yeah. Not as sports. So, yeah. I, and, and the fact that they grew their own food. Right. I think that. That says a lot. Right. No, no, no chemicals in that stuff. So only, only vinegar and sugar. Mm -hmm. I saw that was probably the. Uh, How did people deal with um, like pests? Um, you know, with the the vegetables and the things you grew. I I don't I don't recall much. We didn't use chemicals. Right. I'm sure there we was probably have... like organic stuff that you'd mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, that all work, organic. But... Yeah, it was all organic. Nice. And vinegar was was one of the, which has made a comeback. I think too. A lot of people are using vinegar again for yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, good. And um, what was your favorite way to spend time with your kids? <laughs> I guess I played with them a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I spent time with them. That mm -hmm. was part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we teach them whatever I could teach them. Mm -hmm. Ice hockey, base or softball, mm -hmm. skiing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of music do you like to listen to? Uh, I like Joe Orvar as well. I like him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like some of the country western, you know, uh, certain certain types and uh, what's called in I'm, I'm not a bopper guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you like like the bluegrass and that kind of stuff? Some things, yeah. Some it's very really, really good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. I those. like some of the some of, some I like real well, and others, well. Yeah, yeah. King Cole. Yeah. Yeah, I I listen to watch Lawrence Walk every weekend night. Yeah, I mean that was popular with a lot of people. Yeah, that's uh, he's been on. The, that has been on the air for 60 years. Yeah. And he's been dead since 1992. I saw reruns of that show on one of those cable channels that, uh, you know, shows like, you know, I, it wasn't an antenna TV, but it was one of those type of channels. What channel do you watch him on? Uh, 21, whatever that is. Uh, So there oh, that's it. It's in Indiana. It's, oh, it's in, coming out of Indiana. Indiana. Okay. So so you are able to still see the reruns oh, and yeah. stuff. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, I thought I saw it on mm -hmm. some yeah. one of those channels. Um, so what do you want people to remember the most about you? Yeah, that's a tough that one. I, that I didn't like. They, 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 they were good people. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. most, of them, most of them are all good people. Well, I think you did a good job with the long, good long life. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I'm glad we were able to talk to you. Um, and I appreciate your giving us your time and letting us do this. It's yeah. an honor. No, there's there are a lot of good people, but there's a lot of yo-yos too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's always a problem, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, all right, so we'll wrap up. So that was Frank Neitzel that we got to talk to. We did a little oral history to record for the museum, so. Franz Carl Neitzel was born on November 5th, 1930 in Hinsdale, Illinois, the middle of seven children born at home to Carolyn Frieda Karstens Neitzel and August Carl Heinrich Neitzel in Teedville. They lived in a two-story farmhouse at 91st and County Line Road. Frank attended Palisades School and Lamont High School before joining the Army and eventually marrying Doris Irene Markham on October 23, 1954. They had two daughters, Denise and Kim. Frank still resides in the area not far from the original homestead. Thank you, Frank, for sharing your memories of growing up in Teedville.